Hello, this is Bruce from Elam.org and from Risk Management Framework. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about the differences between DICAP, DOD Risk Management Framework for IT, and Risk Management Framework for normal federal systems. There's a difference between these, and that's what we're going to focus on. First of all, what is DICAP? So DICAP is the DOD Information Assurance Certification and Accreditation Process. So DIACAP is moving to what's called DOD Risk Management Framework for Information Technology. And that is based on NIST Risk Management Framework, which is in NIST SP 837. And that's what we're going to talk about. So DIACAP's going away, and it's a five-step process. Now, if you know DIACAP, if you're familiar with it at all, then you'll find risk management framework very, very similar. As a matter of fact, only the first two steps are really different, and that's because of the documentation that they, the reference documents that they pull from. Let's start off with DICAP of step one of this five-step process, which is initiate and plan for a CNA, certification and accreditation. So in that step, you pretty much do the same things that you do in categorize the system and select the security controls. That matches up and correlates with the risk management framework process. So the only difference is that initiate and plan CNA was pulling from the old 8510 document and now the steps are coming from NIST 837 which is a six step process and categorization is coming from FIPS 199. You're still categorizing the security level of the system just like in DICAP. Now the other thing that you're doing in step one of DICAP is selecting the security controls. In DICAP you call it information assurance. You can see that the name changed, but also the security controls themselves change. That's a huge, huge, huge difference. Now before we go any further, with categorization of the system, not only are you going to use FIPS 199 for DOD systems, but you're also going to use CNSSI 1253, which is also categorization of the system. But it's like an overlay, it's an extra level that you have to go through in order to categorize your system if you have a national security system to categorize that properly. And they also don't use what's called a, a high watermark. That's the big difference in categorization of the system with selection of security controls. This is where the biggest difference is. The old DICAP system only had a few controls. Well, it wasn't a few, but it's way, way less than what NIST has. NIST has over 500 controls, 500 plus controls. You don't use all of those controls for any, any one system. You use them based on the security level of the system. But those 500 controls allow you a lot more granularity and detail for all this new technology that's happening. If you go back to the DIACAP, the old DIACAP process, it was like really for old 80s and 90s uh, equipment. But now you've got mobilization, you've got voice over IP, you've got cloud computing, you've got virtualization, and just a whole bunch of other stuff that actually NIST does a very good job of covering. Well, you didn't have that in the old DIACAP system. Let me tell you, the biggest difference is right here. It's in the controls. And also the language that's in the NIST documents. Because actually, when you go through the NIST documentation, it doesn't have a lot of room for interpretation. That was one of the big flaws of DICAP, is that it was so vague and so big that it would allow a branch such as the Air Force to have their own flavor then that was different from another agency such as uh, the Navy or something. They each had a different flavor of DICAP so that when you went from one unit to another you'd have these all these variations and flavors of DICAP. Now with risk management framework there's so much more detail. So that's in a nutshell the biggest difference is the NSSI 50, uh, 1253 and also way more details in the security controls, way more granularity, way more adherence to lots of different technologies um, and that's a big difference. Implementation controls pretty much the same. You can see that it correlates to implement and validate and that correlates to steps three and four of the risk management framework process which was implement the controls which was you know put in the security controls in once you selected them and then assessing the controls so there's a lot of correlation there validate is the same as assessing the controls in the risk management framework 
there's a lot of similarities. Now the difference once again is the controls. And if we look at NIST SP-853A, you'll see that it's very specific in what the assessor is supposed to see when they actually run that scan or when they're viewing that document. It's very, very specific. And that's one of the great things about the NIST documentation. It leaves very little wiggle room for interpretation, which is actually better for the assessor and better for the assessed. So if we go back to DICAP and we look at Step 3, Phase 3, Make Certification, Determination, and Accreditation Decision. This links up with authorization. So moving on back to DICAP and looking at maintain authorization, you'll see that this links directly up with monitoring, continuous monitoring of controls. It's really the same stuff. It's just making sure that our system maintains a certain security posture. And so that's the same with DOD risk management framework. And it's the same with just regular plain Jane vanilla risk management for normal federal systems. The difference here is that when we go back to DIACAP and we're looking at decommission system, which is the final fifth step of DIACAP or phase of DIACAP, um, you don't see that in the steps of risk management. However, that doesn't mean that you don't decommission systems. You just do it as a part of your continuous monitoring. If your system is at the end of its life cycle, of course, <clears throat> of course you would actually go ahead and uh, decommission that system. So that's the main differences. If you look at the top two steps of the risk management framework, that's where the real difference is between the, really between DIACAP, DOD risk management framework, and regular risk management framework. That's where the differences are. It's mainly in that DOD uses FIPS 199 as well as uh, C CNSSI 1253 to determine what security controls are going to be used and what categorization that national security system will use. And so those are the main differences that you'll see. And then the system security controls themselves. There's so many so you can cover all of these different aspects of new technologies and these new systems.